So hello and welcome to the third lecture of the series on Hilbert Smith operator. So in this lecture we are going to see that adjoint of a Hilbert Smith operator is Hilbert Smith. Uh, if you recall in the first lecture we have seen the definition of Hilbert Smith operator and some examples. In the second lecture we have seen that a Hilbert Smith operator is compact. So set of all Hilbert Smith operators is a subset of set of all compact operators and there was an exercise that in fact it is a subspace. So you had to prove that uh, it, it was closed under addition. If S and T are Hilbert Smith then S plus T is Hilbert Smith and scalar multiplication if alpha belongs to K then alpha S is Hilbert Smith given that S is Hilbert Smith. So that were the first uh, two lectures and now in this lecture uh, we see that uh, if T is T belongs to BLH is Hilbert Smith then its adjoint T star is also Hilbert Smith. Okay so let us uh, start. So suppose T is a Hilbert Smith operator. Suppose T belongs to BLH is Hilbert Smith. So if you recall the definition this means that uh, given any orthonormal basis, so suppose u1, u2 and so on, this is an orthonormal basis uh, for h and because t is Hilbert Smith, so this sum is finite. So summation n equals to 1 to infinity norm of t u n square. This series is convergent. That means the sum is finite. What we have to show? We have to show that uh, t star, its adjoint is Hilbert Smith. So adjoint of T is Hilbert Smith. We have already taken uh, an orthonormal basis. So what we have to show? We have to show that uh, that is we have to show that this sum summation n equals to 1 to infinity norm of uh, now T star. So T star u n square this series is convergent. If we show this then we have shown that t star is Hilbert Smith. So what we do is we start with summation n equals to 1 to infinity uh, t star, norm of t star u n square. Now so we write summation n equals to 1 to infinity and now we use uh, Parseval's identity. If you remember what is Parseval's identity this is uh, nothing but that is equality part in the Bessel's inequality. So Parseval's identity is x equals to summation uh, here already one n is there so I am taking m equals to 1 to infinity mod of uh, x u m square for given this orthonormal basis. So here we have an orthonormal basis. So this is Parseval's identity. So we apply for a, here we take x equals to this. This is our x. So uh, sorry this is norm of x square. Right? So norm of t star u n square that is nothing but norm of x square when we take x equals to t star u n and we apply. So what we get summation n equals to 1 to infinity as it is and norm of x square we apply this. So we get summation m equals to 1 to infinity instead of x we have t star u n t star u n and then uh, u m and then the mode of that inner product and square of that right. So and then the, because the series is convergent so we interchange the sum. So we write summation m equals to 1 to infinity first and then we write summation n equals to 1 to infinity. Uh, this inner product t star u n with u m is nothing but uh, it is just a property of adjoint. Uh, that is inner product u n with uh, t u m. So t star u n u m equals to u n t u m. So this is just uh, by property of adjoint. Okay, just uh, applying adjoint and uh, then uh, we have conjugate symmetry. So this is again I can write as summation m equals to 1 to infinity uh, summation n equals to 1 to infinity. Uh, now this inner product u n with t u m that is nothing but uh, if I write t u m first and then un then I take uh, the conjugate and then this 
but uh, mod z is same as mod z bar so whether we write conjugate or not it does not matter so we can remove actually this this right so which is nothing but you can see it is same this one so let me write this and yes let's scroll down a bit okay so we have just applied the conjugate there and but it is in the modular sign so it does not matter so now again we apply Parseval's identity so what is Parseval's identity uh, norm of x square this time we are writing summation n equals to 1 to infinity summation n equals to 1 to infinity uh, mod of inner product x with uh, un where un is this orthonormal basis x u n square so instead of x we have t u m so this is nothing but uh, summation m equals to 1 to n infinity as it is and we have got uh, t u m square so because uh, t is hilbert smith this is convergent and because these two sum are same so this is also convergent and therefore t star is also hilbert smith right so i hope it is clear right so what we have proved is uh, t is hilbert smith then t star is hilbert smith the converse is also true if t star is hilbert smith then again it's a joint so t sorry if t star is hilbert smith then again it's a joint by applying the same so given if t star is hilbert smith see so this is hilbert smith it's a joint again that is t is hilbert smith so we can say that uh, t is hilbert smith operator if and only if uh, t star is hilbert smith just like uh, the set of compact operators okay so uh, let us go further there is a remark that uh, the set of all compact operators we know that is uh, closed in in BLH that means if we have a sequence of uh, compact operators Tn converges to T then T is also compact but this is not true for uh, Hilbert Smith operator so let us denote the set of all Hilbert Smith operator by C2H it is also denoted by B2H so either C2H or B2H and it is subset of uh, here we have denote KH denoted by KH the set of all compact operators also it is denoted sometimes by B0H right so uh, last exercise last time we have seen that uh, Hilbert Smith operator is compact so this is subset uh, so there are couple of exercises here one is this is proper subset that means there is an example of uh, we have to give an example of compact operator which is not Hilbert Smith so only one side is true Hilbert Smith implies compact but compact does not imply Hilbert Smith secondly uh, that it is not just a subset it is subspace that means it is closed under addition and uh, scalar multiplication which I said in the beginning of the video that if I take two Hilbert Smith operators S and T then S plus T is Hilbert Smith if I take alpha a scalar in K then alpha s is also Hilbert Smith so that is uh, so this makes it a subspace and then uh, and in analogy of this result Tn converges to T if Tn is compact then T is compact uh, this does not hold true in case of uh, Hilbert Smith operators so it is not closed right so we can get a sequence uh, Tn of Hilbert Smith operator which converges to T but t is not Hilbert Smith and uh, such an example you might get from here first you have to find an example of a compact operator uh, which is uh, not Hilbert Smith right okay uh, because if, if if we take a sequence of Hilbert Smith operator they, they are going to be compact so tn are compact if I take tn Hilbert Smith so tn converges to t t is going to be compact we, we want that t is not Hilbert Smith so for, for this uh, we have to first find out an example of this okay so let us uh, proceed further this is just a remark uh, if you can find the example it is good now the question is uh, in the definition of Hilbert Smith operator we use uh, this kind of uh, sum that sum is finite so that was the condition where u u1 u2 and that is an orthonormal basis but that depends on the person choosing right so we are showing what if someone takes another orthonormal basis and the sum might turn out different so that is not the case 
you take any orthonormal basis u1 u2 and so on or v1 v2 and so on any two orthonormal basis for h the sum is going to be same so it does it is independent of uh, the choice of orthonormal basis for h right so that is another important property so let us uh, see this so h is a separable hilbert space and uh, t belongs to blhb hilbert smith and now suppose we have two orthonormal basis so u1 u2 u3 and so on that is one orthonormal basis v1 v2 v3 and so on that is another orthonormal basis for h then uh, we show that this two sum are same right so again uh, very similar to the previous proof we have seen so that is why i have included in this video so uh, we start with the left hand side summation n equals to 1 to infinity norm of t u n square this is uh, again apply Parseval's identity so uh, consider this as x so norm of x square uh, that is nothing but summation m equals to because already n is there here so we are writing m equals to 1 to infinity uh, in a product x with uh, we have written m so x u m square so instead of x we have t u n so this is summation m equals to 1 to infinity a mod of uh, in a product t u n with uh, v m square so we are here we are using v m uh, this choice of orthonormal basis the second one we are moving from first u n to v n so we started with u n but in Parseval's identity we use v m right then again interchange summation again uh, t u n uh, v m that inner product is nothing but by property of a joint inner product of u n with t star v m then uh, again use a uh, conjugate uh, symmetry so if i write uh, this first then it is conjugate but anyway it is inside modulus mod z equals to mod z bar so it does not matter the same right so and then we interchange summation so we write like this summation m equals to 1 to infinity then summation n equals to 1 to infinity and then this quantity so now again we apply uh, Parseval's identity we call this x so norm of x square equals to summation n equals to 1 to infinity uh, mod of x with uh, here un is there again so un square so call it this as x so this whole term becomes by Parseval's identity t star norm of x square so that is uh, norm of t star vm square but just by the previous result we have, uh, we have seen whether we take t or t star the sum is same right so by uh, the above result which we have just seen so t star vm square this is nothing but summation m equals to 1 to infinity norm of uh, t vm square so both these sum are equal so that means uh, it does not depend it does not matter which orthonormal basis you are choosing uh, you choose any basis this quantity is going to be same so that will give us uh, another exercise today so what is the exercise is this so the exercise anyway it is stated here so i can just show you sorry yeah so set of all hilbert smith operators on h is a linear space so it is a subspace of a set of all compact operators so that is uh, uh, we have to show that was the last exercise and now today this exercise because this quantity does not depend on orthonormal basis whichever basis we take un so it does not depend on un so that means now we can define norm of t uh, a hilbert smith operator is given t then we define norm of t to norm of t that is uh, because this series is convergent if it is hilbert smith so this is a finite number and so norm of t is well defined and it does not depend also on the choice of orthonormal basis so define summation n equals to 1 to infinity norm t u n square and then the root of it so this is uh, we have to show that this is actually a norm on c to h that is the set of all hilbert smith operators right so we have to verify the the properties of norm norm of t is always greater than equals to zero yes norm of t u n is greater than equals to zero so this are all non-negative the sum is non-negative its root is also non-negative then norm of t is zero we have to show that um, t must be zero so t is zero on the whole orthonormal basis so t is zero 
and then the other two properties triangular inequality and then that modulus uh, scalar uh, thing so once we verify this this becomes um, the norm linear space now with this norm because vector space already that was the last exercise this becomes norm linear space so i think uh, i should stop here in the next uh, lecture we'll see uh, the condition for uh, metrics infinite metrics to be uh, hilbert smith what what is the condition the how can we say that uh, t is hilbert smith and then further results we'll see uh, let me know if you have any doubt in this and thank you